Welcome to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco, bringing you interviews with industry experts and regular folks who tested the job search waters and succeeded, and strategies to tell your story and land your job interviews in 60 days, guaranteed. Here's your host, Virginia Franco. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Resume Storyteller Podcast. This is Virginia Franco. And today I want to talk about common job search myths. Um, so many of them are avoidable, but I have found lately that I am in working with clients that a lot of these misnomers are just, they're still prevalent. And um, I'm hoping that by talking through a couple of them, that it will dispel. Um, any misconceptions that are out there. And I, I know that a lot of this stems from, a lot of the myths come from just, there's just so much confusion out there. There are so many people that describe themselves as experts. I actually went on LinkedIn the other day and checked, and there are almost 784,000 members that hold the title of career coach and over 1.5 million that call themselves employment coaches. And then there's over a million people like me who describe themselves as resume writers. Um, so between the experts sharing their advice on everything career related, plus all the anecdotal stuff that you hear from, you know, our friends and family that are very well meaning, there it's just no wonder that job seekers are confused. And um, I have no doubt that's why there are so many job search myths out there today. Um, So the first one that I want to talk through is the idea that job hopping is bad. Um, The truth is, is when I first began writing resumes, you know, back in the 20th century, I would agree with that sentiment. Um, Companies did frown upon candidates that left their job every couple of years. Um, But in my experience, people started to make a 180 on this thinking around the time that we started to pull out of the Great Recession. Um, so today, while job hopping every year still does set off red flags, in a lot of environments, you know, sales, operations, consulting, startup, it's perfectly acceptable for an employee to begin a new job search once the challenge that they were hired to do is complete. Um, moreover, and, and I think this is really important, the idea of staying put actually can hurt your long-term salary potential. Um, In fact, an ADP ADP did an analysis back in um, 2016 um, where they revealed that the biggest salary bumps come after employees stay put two years, but not more than five. So once you stay more than five, sometimes you might be shooting yourself in the foot from a salary perspective. Um. And then the other thing that I found interesting is that big pay bumps are much less likely if most of your previous experience took place with one employer. Um, And look, there are lots of reasons why you should stay or go other than salary. Um, And whenever I'm writing a resume for someone who has stayed put a long time or someone that has been leaving every couple of years, I make sure to focus on what they were brought on to do and how they solved it. Um, that way, the reader knows that you're someone that sticks with the job at hand and then moves on to the next opportunity, whether it's internally or otherwise. Um, the second myth that I often hear is that you always should wear a suit and tie to an interview. That's what my mom told me. That's what my grandfather told my dad. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure when this changed, but I can assure you that it has changed. Um, and I think it's because the idea of business casual didn't start making its appearance into corporate America until, I mean, it's probably been about 20-ish, 25 years ago. Um, so flash forward to today and acceptable dress attire ranges. You know, suit and tie works on Wall Street. Jeans and a t-shirt work, on Silicon, work in Silicon Valley. Um, So it stands to reason that if you show up in a suit and tie to a tech interview in California, or if you wear jeans and a t-shirt to your investment banking interview on Wall Street, um, people are going to look at you funny. You're not going to make a great first impression. So 
if you're struggling to figure out what to wear or what not to wear, do your homework. It's okay to ask a friend who works somewhere or is in that industry or try to make a connection with someone on LinkedIn and, and ask for wardrobe advice. Um, and that'll help you pick out the typical attire. And then what I would suggest is try to dress one notch nicer. So if jeans and t-shirt are acceptable, then maybe you go with um, some casual pants and a nice shirt. Okay, on to myth number three. Um, and this is one that I am talking with to clients about constantly. If I have a great resume and I am the perfect candidate, then I will apply online and I will get a call back. No, no, no. Um, while it is absolutely important that your resume be suitable for applying online because applicant tracking software is in place when you submit to a company's website or you go through LinkedIn jobs or Indeed and all of that, um, you don't have to go far in your internet searching to know that job search chat sites are littered with people frustrated that there is a resume black hole where they submit their application online and they never hear a response. Um, more often than not, it is not because of the resume. Um, you have to apply to like 100%. I think you have to apply to 100 roles to get two responses. Um, you know, mine do better, but seven, eight responses is still pretty miserable. And that's because beating the ATS system is a numbers game. And sadly, the odds are just not in job seekers' favor. Um, that's in large part because customer uh, companies are inundated by responses. Um, it's also because a lot of resumes aren't formatted correctly. Um, and then lastly, a lot of times the pipeline is filled with candidates that are just not a good fit. So the system is overwhelmed. My advice is to bypass that system as your first point of entry. Your best shot at landing an interview is a personal referral, period. The staff backed this up. Um, undercover recruiter actually reported recently the following, that only 7% of employee referrals apply for roles, but it accounts for 40% of hires. Um, secondly, if you land a job through referral, you're going to get onboarded much more quickly. Actually, um, 10 days faster than job boards and therefore 15 days faster than career sites. So going through referral gets you in your role much more quickly. Um, and then lastly, the recruiting process, process is shorter for people that are referred according to 60% of the employers and recruiters that were surveyed with this. So referrals are much more likely to land you a role land you the role more quickly, and then get you onboarded that much faster. So you know, here's what I say. Network your way into a referral, and then what will likely happen is you will start with uh, preliminary sort of informal uh, chats or informational or informal interviews, and then it's likely that the a the hiring manager or someone will then call you and say, okay, the, the job posting is out now. And then you apply online. And then it doesn't matter if you are number two or number 2,000 to submit because the, there's a person on the other end that is looking out for you. And it really, it's a fast path or a fast track to the top of the pile. Um, myth number four is uh, another one that is um, pretty prevalent. And that's the idea that you don't want to limit your opportunities because, and readers should be able to read through your career history and figure out how you are a good fit. Um, and while that maybe was true years ago, I can tell you for certain that today it no longer is. Um, apart from leisure or pleasure reading, people are usually in a huge rush when they are reading. I always joke that I'm not even sure my own mother would take the time to read through my resume. Um, you know, aside from best-selling novels or interesting magazine articles, there's not much that gets in-depth read um, on the first glance. And um, that goes for resume. Resumes are likely going to get skimmed on their first read. And again, the stats back it up. Um, there's an infamous study that's been quoted for years by the ladders 
saying that first round reads of resumes last a total of six seconds. Now, that number does get higher as you move up the chain. So that first level screen reader or HR screener might look at it for six seconds, but then that next level person might give it 10, 15. Um, and then the hiring manager will probably initially read it for about 30 seconds if you're lucky. So what this means is that you have got to spell out immediately the role that you're targeting, how your skill set aligns closely with the job requirements. Um, and then lastly, you've got to show achievements or accomplishments that cement for them that you know your stuff. Um, the good thing about uh, having a headline at the very top is that you can tweak it to uh, show the reader the role that you're targeting. So if you are looking at a... Um, Let's say you're looking at either a COO role at a um, smaller company or a VP role at a bigger company. You can change your headline to say COO or VP of operations or VP of manufacturing operations. You, know, you, can, you can add or subtract words to customize that. Lastly, um, this is another one that's getting better, but I do want to address it. And that's the idea that I should just focus on my resume and I don't really have to pay much attention to my LinkedIn profile or my social media presence, all of that. Again, I'm going to quote some stuff. Last year, 2018, Career Builder noted that 70% of employers use social media to research screen candidates during the hiring process. That's almost three quarters. That means that the days are long gone when a great resume alone will cut it for an interview. And that's not even talking about the outreach part. Um, and that's because without today, without online proof that you are who you say you are and can do what you claim, alarm bells are going to go off. Um, so a lot of people just are so worried about social media that... Um, they want to erase their online persona, I'll tell you that this will backfire. Um, according to a Business News Daily article that I discovered, almost half of all employers wouldn't call you for an interview if you are MIA online. Um, furthermore, if your social media includes posts that might position you in an unfavorable light, you run the risk of, uh, you, you risk your chances of getting interviewed or hired. So my advice to my kids, to my clients, to anyone who will listen is that content that is for your grandmother to read should not go on social media. That means avoid online rants, discriminatory comments, provocative or inappropriate pictures. Um, and some of this is common sense, but I can't tell you how many rants I have seen on LinkedIn where people comment just bitching about Whatever the issue is, um, rants just make you look like you are have too much time on your hands and are disgruntled, and it will set off a red flag for someone. So, if you want to rant, do it to someone in person, but skip it online. Conversely, by including information that positions you positively, you can use social media to your benefit. Um, in fact, 30% of hiring managers said that they found information supporting the candidate's professional qualifications, um, and 33% were impressed with their professional image. So um, use it to your advantage. Include pictures of yourself doing noble things. Um, write posts that position you as an industry expert. Use your Twitter to retweet articles that align with the industry that you are targeting. Um, so I hope those examples help. Um, look, job search myths are avoidable. Um, I'm sure you'll keep on hearing more. They're not going to go away. But I hope that I showed you that the staff bust the myth um, and back up the strategies that I've outlined. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to shoot me an email, send me a LinkedIn email, um, send me a text. I will answer. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. You've been listening to Resume Storyteller with Virginia Franco. 
To learn more about storytelling strategies to catch the eye of today's skim online readers, hiring and decision makers, go to www.virginiafrancoresumes.com.